Right. I've never seen anything like that on my phone. I don't know how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and so what? So you have to go to Verizon. Big deal. Go to Verizon. I don't care. Is that an excuse not to do it? We've been talking about this for six months now. You know, but I don't, I don't know what she's going to do. I said, I think you need to, yeah, just, you know, be done with it or quit complaining about it. Yeah, she's been like, you know, take, taking pictures of everything. And she's got all these texts printed off and stuff. And I said, if you just show them those, that's harassment. You need to deal with that. You shouldn't be able to get away with this, you know. And she says it's the same thing over and over, you know, how. Her life's so much better, and he's got taking care of his kids, and she's got a great place, and he doesn't. And I said, Tara, you work for what you have. Yeah, his three hundred dollars isn't makeup. You know, if you if you use it for what it's used for, you use three hundred dollars on a kid for eating and clothes and activities or whatever you do. Your electric, your housing, that kind of stuff. And I said, if he's complaining because he doesn't have any money, because he don't want to work, you know, he could so get a different job. Yeah, yeah. All right, he can do all the things he wants to do. Yeah, and Ivy said something about there. She wanted to go to California, and she can't even go to California with her friend because they don't have any money. And I'm like, first of all, she's in eighth grade. She don't need to go to California with her friend. You know, really. And if he really wants her to go to California, yeah, I don't know what her mom does. She did work in the school cafeteria. I don't know if she still does that or not, but it's. I don't think either one of them have, have a lot of motivation to do something better, but yeah. It's pathetic. Right, right. Right, exactly. Well, and then to get it jumped up 50 bucks or whatever it is, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, it doesn't really. Yeah, because it still doesn't take more for you to raise that child. You know, if they give you X amount of dollars, I think you could make it off whatever three, four hundred dollars they give you. Just because he's making more, they shouldn't have to pay you more, you know? Unless it's like an alimony thing, but when you get remarried, that should not be, you know, that should all cancel out, you know? So, yeah. Right. Yeah. What'd she say? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It might have been last Tuesday because she did take the day off because they, the lady at the courthouse said, we might just call you just to get your side, you know, and she says, we might not. So the boss said, just take the morning off, stay at home. That way they call. You're not here at work getting interrupted by all that stuff. So she did. And she was pretty stressed out. And then she didn't hear anything. They didn't call. So she said, finally, about one o'clock, she called and then the lady called her back. But then she said, right after that, Michael's phone calls just kept coming and coming and coming. And she said, he's just, he's just hot. And I said, well, I'm sure he is, you know? 
with the right. Right. Yeah. Well, and now he's saying I'm gonna I'm gonna file one. I'll get her six months out of the year, you know. And I said, you know, Tara. Tara said she was just praying that whatever is best for B will happen. And she did that for court. And I said, you can't stop me. You just need to keep praying that because if it's truly really best for B to be with her dad six months out of the year, then that's you can't you can't do anything about that. But I said I think the court sees what kind of person he is. You know, he's not being honest and that type of stuff. And she said, you know. He's mad at her because she gets these little better jobs each time. But she goes, Mom, as soon as I get a different job, I send them all my papers like I'm supposed to do, and I let them know. So I'm not trying to hide anything, and they know that, you know. But she says he just plays these little sneaky cards, which she says maybe he's not trying to, but she says it appears that he is. And so she goes, I think they're picking up on that. And I said, oh, they're, they're not stupid, you know. So just, yeah. Yeah, because it's just dumb. Right. And the lady said he was very cocky in court, you know. And Tara goes, he's mad, and so that's how he is. And he thinks he knows what's right. And I'm like, yeah, they don't get they don't get anywhere with that kind of attitude, though. When a judge sees somebody cocky, they're like, you know, screw you. I don't have to do anything for you. And so that just is what it is. I don't know because even the picture the picture she has where his phone calls come through he's like in this camouflaged get up with this big bushy beard he just looks like a small man he looks nasty and that just disgusts me and I'm thinking why would you want that picture to pop up every time he calls or texts or whatever but it's the picture that's connected to all of this text and the calls and I'm like I don't know I don't know if she sees him different than what most people see him I I have never been able to figure out, even in high school, I didn't get that, you know? And he was at least more clean cut then, you know? Just this mousy little guy. But now he's like, yeah, he's just bushy and ugly and nasty looking. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. I know. I know. I told Terry, I said, he's, 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 he's going to lose it. He is losing it. Well, that's what she said too, Mom. She said if he would get cocky, it'd be... She goes, I don't know what he would do to her. And I said, well, there. I mean, I wouldn't doubt that, you know, if he really wants to get rid of her, you know. Yeah, I don't think so either, but who knows, you know. Just stuff like that happens. And so I just told her, I said, you got to be careful. But I said, I don't think having a restraining order on him and you filing charges against him, I don't think that's going to hurt you, you know. At least it shows that you're you're done and you want him to quit doing what he's doing, you know? Right, right. Yeah, so. I know. Well, and then this whole text that I sent about we're living in a one-bedroom apartment, I said, for right there, he's not going to get me. If he has three people living in one bedroom, they're surely not going to give him another child. You know, those two kids at their ages, Ivy's 8th grade, Gage's 6th grade, they shouldn't be in the same bedroom. And who knows, maybe they've got the bedroom and Mike's on the couch, or I don't know what the setup is, but maybe it's not even true, you know, who knows. But I just think it's just disgusting, you know, when you've got two kids coming, you need at least